Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. So before we start today's journey, Jamaica is currently under a tropical storm watch. A tropical storm watch was issued late last night for Jamaica as the island prepares for possible impact of tropical storm Elsa. The mid-service last night said that the projection is for rainfall across the island. The rain could start affecting sections of Jamaica as early as today, Friday, the 2nd of July, 2021. The head of the ODPEM, Mr. Richard Thompson, he is saying that he is confident that Jamaica's disaster response agencies are ready to deal with any emergency from the rains expected to lash the island over the weekend. Mr. Thompson, easier said than done me boss. The mid service of Jamaica has forecast that the island will experience morning showers today and isolated thunderstorms across eastern parishes. This afternoon is expected to be cloudy with showers and isolated thunderstorms across sections of most parishes in the evening. Tomorrow, Saturday the 3rd, the island should experience nighttime showers, whilst Sunday is expected to be mostly cloudy with early morning showers across eastern parishes, widespread showers and thunderstorms with occasional gusty winds are expected across the island late Sunday morning and throughout the rest of the day. According to the Met Service, a tropical wave is quickly approaching the Central Caribbean and is expected to move across Jamaica today, whilst Tropical Storm Elsa is expected to move across sections of the Eastern Caribbean on Friday bringing rain to Jamaica. So, rain is forecast for the weekend. Mr. Richard Thompson is saying, he's saying that Jamaica is ready. Let me tell you something, Mr. Thompson. Jamaica not ready. We are not ready. And this is not me saying that you are talking foolishness. But we are being realistic. We have seen rains in most areas over the past few weeks. So the ground is saturated. We have seen what happened when there is sustained rainfall in Jamaica. Landslide, slippages, floods, you name it. When the rain start fall, Mr. Thompson, there is nothing you nor anyone else with all of the good thoughts, with all of the well wishes can do. So, my advice to people who are in flood prone areas, when the rain start, try and go to higher ground. And be careful at the higher ground that you are going because we saw what happened in St. Andrew last year when the heavy rain started falling. So, Protect yourself and your family. So moving right along. Before we start today's journey, look on your screen. This video has been making the rounds, but we decided on enhancing it as well as slowing it down. The young man on your screen, that is Lavante Roden. He's otherwise called OTF or Pepto. This video was posted on Instagram by one of Pepto's cronies. This video was captioned, Rest well, my warrior. You young youths, deciding and going in a life of crime, you are not no warrior. Warriors are persons who have a cause. This hoodlum was a criminal. So you young guys who are thinking of going in a life of crime, when you go in a life of crime, you are now a criminal, not a warrior. Look at this young man, good looking young man, and this is the lifestyle he chose. At age 21, I am sure he might have made over 21 doppies, and I am not exaggerating. This one shooting that he was involved in, seven persons were shot. All seven could have been fatal. Because it's not like they were shooting for foot or for hand. They were shooting 
to take out persons. One incident, seven persons. I am sure he has been involved in a lot more attacks. Sometimes when we talk, you know, some persons say, you are wasting your breath. We know what we say cannot impact everybody. But if what we say can impact one person, one young man, our job would have been done. Youths, the crime lifestyle, not get involved in it. It's gonna be jail, it's gonna be prison, or it's gonna be coffin. Yes, I know. We are all heading to the coffin. But don't speed up your going to the coffin process. Remember your family, your mother, your little sister, your little brother. Some of you have kids. Help the kids to grow up and ensure that you are around to help guide those kids. The robbing and the killing. No bother with it. Pepto, he chose a life of crime and he's gone at 21. Youths, is that what you want? Don't you want to live to see 22 or 23 or 24? Don't you want to live to go in your 30s? Oh, so what you are saying? What happened to Pepto can happen to you? Because you got more careful? Think again. The gathering there that you see some of them wearing. It can't protect them. The aisle there that you see enough of them rubbing up with. It cannot protect them. The aisle there where you see a lot of them are sprinkled around them house corner. And a burn candles in the night. It cannot save them. If you are already involved, try and ease out at that lifestyle. So in today's journey, we are going to pick up where we left off yesterday. We are going to start at Ramble in the parish of Anova. We are going to move right along. We are going to pass through Barda. We are going to go down Lindos Hill, go down Haddo, go to Withern, and go down. Sit back, relax, and drive with me. So, before we start today's stories, if you are in the parish of Westmoreland, or if you are in the parish of Anova, or even St. James, or if you're passing through the parish of Westmoreland and maybe something happened, and your car bumper get burst or something like that, one of the best plastic welders in Western Jamaica is at Mango Hall. Now, Mango Hall, that road that you turn like you're going to Jam West, the shop is right at the front. His name is Michael. He does wired plastic welding. Anything in plastic that you want to weld, whether it's your water tank, your car bumper, check with Michael. His phone number is 876-520-5366. So today, we have a few stories for you. We are going to start off with some good news. This incident, it happened along the Landailo Main Road in the Savlamar area in the parish of Westmoreland. It happened around 2.30 a.m. on Thursday, the 1st of July, 2021. Our information is that the police, they were on patrol and mobile patrol along Darling Street in Savlamar. We are learning that when this police patrol was in the vicinity of the Dialys funeral home, they saw a motorcycle with two men aboard coming out of the lane right beside Dialys. And seeing the police, the driver of the motorcycle, he turned and sped off in the land dialer direction. The officers, they pursued this motorcycle and reaching right before land dialer phase two. The motorcycle slowed down and the pillion passenger he jumped off of the motorcycle and ran into some nearby bushes. The police officers, they realized that this was a trick. So they didn't bother to chase the motorcycle. They stopped and chased the man who jumped off of the motorcycle. The man, however, managed to make good his escape in the bushes. The police officers, they searched the bush and bingo they found a black and silver nine millimeter 
Parabellum pistol. This pistol had the serial number intact. It was affixed with a magazine containing four rounds of 9mm cartridges. Like we say, the guy, he escaped, but he dropped the gun. I wonder if he was trying to draw the gun or maybe engage the police in a shootout. You see, while well, we have to appreciate police, these police, you know, they were chasing this guy. They didn't know what him have. So, it's one of two things. He might have pulled the gun and the gun drop, or whilst he was running, the gun drop. So, if it is that he pulled the gun and the gun drop, it's one of two things. It either drop mistakenly or he deliberately drop it. If he did not deliberately drop it, can we imagine what was in his mind? All he needed to do was squeeze off two. These hoodlums, I wonder what their mission was. These two police officers might have saved a few persons' lives. Think about it. Congratulations to these two police officers who, whilst we were sleeping at 2.30, they were out there ensuring that we in our beds were safe. If you don't appreciate the police, I do. Think about it. So that seizure was about 2.30, Thursday morning, the 1st of July. There was another seizure at Salt Marsh in Falmouth later that morning. It took place Thursday, the 1st of July, 2021, about 6.30 a.m. Our information is that members of CTAC, now CTAC is the acronym for Counterterrorism and Organized Crime. That is a branch of the JCF. They do more high-tech investigation. So CTAC, they carried out a raid at Salt Marsh. Our information is that an unfinished building was searched. During the search, one M16 Colt rifle with the serial number intact along with two magazines and 31 rounds of 5.56 cartridges along with 12 rounds of 0.45 cartridges and 10 rounds of 0 0.40 cartridges were seized. This recovery was in the Scarlet Hall area of Salt Marsh. So in this one raid, the police seized one M16 rifle and a total of 53 rounds. Congrats to members of CTAC for this recovery. Now, later that morning again, about 11.30 a.m., the Montego Bay police, they went to a place named Marigold Crescent. Is it Marigold or Marigold? But this is in the Montego Hills area. We are told that the police officers, they carried out a snap raid at a premises. During this raid, an unfinished building was searched. And during this search, one brown handle, black 6 9 mm pistol with the serial number intact was found. No one was arrested in connection with this find. Congratulations once again to the Montego Bay police. Now, if you are here, you are watching our videos, you have not yet subscribed to the channel, remember to subscribe. Hit on the notification bell, then click all, and you will be notified as soon as we have uploaded a new video. And if you are watching the video so far, and you have not yet hit on the thumbs up button, please hit on the thumbs up button. Nobody wait until the video is finished. And then, you forget. Hit on the thumbs up button now. In the next story, now this one, it took place at a place named Maras District. Maras District is in the parish of Westmoreland. For those who know Hartford, Maras District is right after you pass Hartford, going up. It took place early morning, Wednesday, the 30th of June, 2021, about 8 a.m. Our information is that a man, he's known as Speco. He's 37 years old and he's a farmer of Roaring River in the parish of Westmoreland. Now, Speco, you're seeing a photograph of his brother 
on your screen. His brother, he was shot and taken out by hoodlums last year. I think it's in March last year, 2020. His brother, he was attacked and taken out. Now on this date and time, Speco, he operates a cow farm. He was at the cow farm when we are told that a man, he rode up on a yellow Cabra motorcycle. The man, he brandished a gun and opened gunfire at Speco. Speco, he was hit in his right cheek, his neck and his right shoulder. The hoodlum on the motorcycle then made good his escape. We are told that Speco, he was able to call some family members. They rushed to his assistance where he was rushed to a nearby hospital. He was treated and has been admitted in a serious condition. At the time of doing this video, we are told that Speco, he is still here with us. And we are hoping that he stays here with us. This incident happened broad daylight. We are also hoping that Speco is able to identify his attacker. In the final story for today, no, you know we can hardly bring crime stories and Montego Bay is not included. This one, it took place at a place named New Road, Providence in Flankers in the parish of St. James. It took place early morning again about 7 30 a.m yesterday thursday the first of july 2021 we are told that a man is popularly called dada he's 29 years old and he live at the same address new road providence in flankers we are told that dada he was entering his white toyota axio motor car when he was pounced upon by a lone gunman. This man, he opened gunfire at Dada. Dada was hit in his right leg, his left upper arm, his right lower arm, and both sides of his buttocks. The hoodlum, he then made good his escape on foot in the area. Dada, he was assisted to a nearby hospital by residents where he has since been admitted in a serious condition. At the time of recording this video, we made checks and Dada, he was still alive. When this crime scene was processed, five 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene. So if it's only five bullets that were fired, all five connect. Because Dada, he was hit five times. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody.